And riders, in a Reddit post today, PCF revealed some of the high level changes made to balancing in Outriders World Slayer and why they were doing this. Let's have a look at the key points raised. PCF have been working on this rebalancing since New Horizon was launched in November and today revealed that there will be hundreds of entities, as they put it, that have been affected. What they mean by this are gear sets and mods. Now, given that there are around 400 mods in the game, this implies that about a quarter of existing mods in the game are going to change. That is massive. Now before you all panic, <coughs> PCF did state their overriding philosophy with these changes was on improving the player's experience and buffing underperforming content, which sounds reasonable but as always, the devil will be in the detail. They then went on to address the difficulty curve in the base game, and specifically the wall that some players hit around challenge tiers 9 and 10, and also the spikes in damage which resulted in the two hit deaths many of us experienced. What they are aiming for with the difficulty in World Slayer campaign would be a pleasant experience on low to mid tiers, but that the difficulty will then ramp up on higher tiers compounding into the end game challenge, which even the most hardcore players will appreciate. My interpretation of this is that the difficulty in the campaign will increase as you progress through it, but will be very manageable for a max level player who is able to complete CT15s as long as you are leveling up your gear to the max level you can. Once you get to the end game though, things are going to get much tougher as you progress up the apocalypse tiers making build, gear and teams very important. Personally, I like this a lot, everyone should be able to enjoy the campaign and the World Slayer story, but the hardest content needs to be a challenge, something that CT15s just weren't once you had a good build and the right gear. The key thing though will be to make sure that everyone can continue to progress, challenging but not impossible. Hitting walls is where the game gets frustrating but too easy and it's boring. PCF will be keeping an eye on this and monitoring players progression to ensure that the experience remains fun. With World Slayer, PCF are trying to reduce meta builds which came to dominate New Horizon. You know the ones, Borealis Monarch, Seismic Commander, Akari and Trespassers. They are also looking to address where mods or builds were being used in unexpected ways. Well, let's, let's stop here for a second though, as this is something I don't agree with PCF on. If you had put something into the game and through the imagination and creativity of players, they have found a way to use it to outperform what you intended, don't stifle that. That is what made this game so good. The build creation, building weird shit to see if it works. If you eliminate that, then this game is dead. Let's get back to it. PCF did flag that they will be changing some of the gear and mod sets that underperform currently or didn't fit with the build it would be used in. For example, mods that will now reduce resistance for skill based builds rather than armor. Hidden away within this rather long and wordy section though is an absolute bombshell that they are rebalancing the top builds to bring them in line with the other build options. And this can mean only one thing. The nerf bat is being wielded and a lot of you are not going to be very happy. I am all for balancing that promotes build diversity, but with a new expansion and difficulty, bring the other gear sets up to the meta and balance the difficulty against that, rather than bringing the best builds down to the average. PCF will also be addressing weapon diversity and doing so by making tweaks to the core design of underused weapons, changing their accuracy, stability and so on. I think this is a very good approach and would only be better if they could address my potato aim with sniper rifles. This one is going to hurt. Damage multipliers are going to get a big nerf. PCF specifically referred to the Borealis Monarch Technomancer build using mods like Freezing Boost, Shatter, Dark Sacrifice and so on. Their rationale was that they wanted to actively engage players to be able to use and rely on their own player skill. They did go on to say though that these sort of builds would still be viable but no longer dominant. There is an underlying implication here which was somewhat referred to in the difficulty curve discussion. The less skill skillful players are going to struggle with some of the hardest new content and this does worry me a little. I think it's a little disingenuous of PCF to imply that amplifier builds required no skill to play. Did they overpower the content in New Horizon? Well maybe somewhat but not completely. If you screw things up there was still a chance you would die as a result. The thing that worries me is that this could end up disenfranchising casual players who will make up the vast majority of the player base. If the majority can't beat the game 
or feel that they are good enough, then they will just go elsewhere. There's too much choice for them not to. The final thing that PCF are looking to address is on-kill triggers, particularly for multiplayer game sessions. They're doing this by changing many of these to critical or successful shots. In principle, I think this is a good thing, as it will address some of the hit detection issues that you find in groups, as well as potentially stacking mods when facing a single target. Think of things like Bloodless or Killing Spree. Console players, though, I can see that this change could be quite difficult as hitting crits with a controller is not always that easy and for most is definitely not reliable. This could cause a pretty steep drop off in damage output which I can't see how PCF could then address without overly buffing PC players as a result. Finally, PCF finished off with what should have been an inconsequential throwaway paragraph in which they revealed that the trigger for bone shrapnel is being impacted by the changes and so will now proc on critical shots rather than on a kill. So it's the same as the tier 3 version of this. Bone shrapnel was a staple of many rounds based builds because it wouldn't steal kills and thus impact on ammo replenishment. This change, unless the explosion doesn't hit the source will have killed this mod for those builds and left them with very few alternatives. A final kick in the balls for firepower builds really. I will be covering all the gory details of these changes and all changes to mods in the game in a video that will be coming out on Tuesday June the 28th, the launch day for pre-orders. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out.